Hi, my name is Jim Pfeiffer with Packet Video. In this tutorial video, I'm going to be covering the configuration of the Tawaki Media Server. It'll cover both the PC and the Mac platform. I'll be explaining what all the settings mean on the configuration pages, and I'll also make some suggestions for the settings for the best performance. Next, I'd like to talk about the Media Receivers link. What the page shows me is a list of devices that the media server detected on the network their MAC address, and their IP address, along with the type of device it is and the type of default navigation it's going to use for that device. So let me explain a little bit about how this list is arrived at. The Tawaki Media Server uses a protocol called UPnP. UPnP stands for Universal Plug and Play. UPnP is a protocol that runs on your home network, and it allows the media server to discover clients. It also allows those clients to discover the server. In that process, the media server is able to detect the make and model of your specific client device. This allows me to talk about another feature that the Tawaki Media Server has. There is a capability on the media server called the Client Adaptation Layer. What that means is that the media server can fine-tune its performance to match your specific client device. For example, you can see here that it detected that I have a PlayStation 3 on my network and it's going to fine-tune its navigation for the PlayStation 3. This is important for a few reasons because on some of the devices that we detect, we actually do specific things to make the user experience better. For example, if we detect a music device, we're not going to serve up the library of, of videos and photos to that device because it wouldn't make sense when you're uh, listening to music to have to navigate through your photos and other things. So if we detect the make and model, then we'll know things about uh, the type of media that device can consume and only give it the navigation tree that makes sense. Likewise, on some of the photo frames, for example, we'll do things with our uh, serving up of photos that makes the photos look best on that type of device. So it's important every now and then to check through the list to make sure that these settings make sense. If you have one device that's showing generic media receiver as the type that we detect, what that means is that this device is a generic UPnP device, and perhaps we don't know of the make and model of that, and so a generic media receiver setting is going to work best for that one. You can also turn off media receivers. So for example, if you don't want your kids listening to music late at night, you can go to your music server, and you can turn off their music player from your web interface here. Next, I'll go to the network link. On the network link, you see a message here that says, Restart on NIC changes. What this means is that it allows the server to restart if the network connection to your computer uh, changes at any time. Uh, NIC stands for Network Interface Card. So if you happen to unplug your server from the, uh, the network and replug it, um, if this setting is set, then it tells the server to restart whenever the network settings on your computer have changed. So I would recommend keeping this on all the time. Next, I'm going to go to the Media Feeds setting. Under the Media Feeds page, you see a whole list of things you can set here. And I'll explain what this is. The Twonky Media Server is able to get online content and bring it into the Media Server to expose to all of your client devices on the network. For example, under Internet Radio, it has a list of different types of music genres you can select. If I, for example, if I select um, alternative punk or jazz or whatever, then I'll begin to see radio stations show up on my media uh, devices under this internet radio link so that I can select different types of music that I like and stream that to my device. Also on the Media Feeds page, it's possible to set settings for Flickr and Photo Bucket. After making your settings on the Media Feeds page, one quick check uh, after saving your changes, for example, is to go to your media browser page up here. The media browser is a way to actually uh, launch into the navigation tree of your media server and see what all of your other client devices would normally see on the UPnP side. So I'm going to hit the media browser here. And now I can simply use a web interface to go through my, uh, my media that I'm serving off of the server. So I just added some internet radio, so now I want to go into my music category, and I see a new category down here under hand-picked radio. I can go into there, and if I say give me all the stations, now it's giving me all the stations coming in from that media feed that I just set up.
One of the most important links on the configuration page is the one called Maintenance. If I go into there, I see a list of buttons that are available for me to do uh, some different types of functions on the server. For example, if I make any changes, you always want to hit the Save Changes button. And sometimes you also need to hit the Restart Server button, depending on the, the changes you made. There's also a button there that says Rescan Content Directories. This button is used if you want the server to rescan your entire list of media shares and find all the content that's in there. There's also a button called Rebuild Database. The server creates a database when it scans your content and indexes all the metadata. This database from time to time can get fairly large. So sometimes it's good to go and do this rebuild database from time to time just to clear out everything and have it rebuilt from scratch. By hitting the Reset to Defaults button, you actually tell the media server to go back to all of the defaults. So the only caution with this button is that if you've made specific settings to your navigation tree or, or different types of settings for your client devices, this can actually wipe out some of those changes and you may have to go back and put a new name in for your server if it lost the name. There's also the ability to create log files. So you can click this button here and actually view the log file, clear it, uh, or save it to another file. For other tutorial videos covering the Twonky Media products, please see the Packet Video YouTube channel. Or for other information, visit www.twonkyforum.com. Thank you.